Carlo Scarpa, born 2nd of June 1906, Venice, moved to Venezia when he was two and spent most of his childhood there. But after the death of his mother when he was 13, him and his father moved back to Venice where he then studied architecture and graduated. But he refused to take part in the exam that was required to practice architecture. This meant that he was required to have architects who worked with him. He spent 15 years as the director of the Venini Glassworks and in these 15 years, he learned to appreciate the craft of glasswork. This led him to work into the night to perfect new glasswork designs. It was there that his appreciation for craft and materiality began. Examples of this can be seen throughout all his works. It was said that Scarpa was influenced mainly by his hometown of Venice, but when it came to designs, he could find inspiration for a marble floor from paintings. And when he had an idea, he would spend three plus months developing these ideas and sometimes could be seen doing two different designs at the same time, one in each hand as he had two different ideas for the same project. Scarpa would often refine his ideas right up until construction. Scarpa was at the peak of his career when he died. His death happened on the site of one of his projects, as he fell down a flight of stairs. It was only after his death that he was recognised for his vast knowledge of materiality and creation of architectural experience. One of Scarpa's collaborators, Arrigo Rudi, said, I believe it's quite impossible to visit a Scarpa with your hands in your pockets. You've got to touch, to feel. This backs up the idea of his designs being more than just buildings, that they are an experience. Throughout his career, Scarpa worked with many craftsmen on his designs working on new techniques to create the intricate details his designs required. This meant a lot of his time was spent in the metalworks in Venice, and this is where Scarpa's attention to construction methods allowed him to highlight them with the use of exotic materials like gold and expensive marbles, and this is what separates him from other architects. Another thing that separates him from other architects is that throughout his career, he didn't once work on the construction of a new building, but rather he worked on restorations of existing buildings, working to bring together new and old aspects of architecture through the use of exotic materials and complex joining methods. One thing that all Scarpa's works have in common is the attention to detail. This included using certain aspects of his design to highlight exi existing history or draw the eye to certain aspects of the architecture that would have just been over overlooked. An example of this is within the Quirini Stampalia, Venice. There is an entrance to a room that Scarpa has cut away from the frame to reveal the Renaissance architecture below. Scarpa often brought to attention materiality within his work by carving out parts to draw the eye to what is also on the inside of the material. This knowledge and appreciation is what separated Scarpa from other architects. Not only did Scarpa use his knowledge of materiality to create an architectural experience, but he also used the surroundings of the building. An example of this is the Quirini Stampali Library. The room that is first entered was designed in such a way that during the Aqua Alta, there is what is described as a moat around the room, fills with water to create the experience of being inside a boat. And this can be seen throughout the building. Scarpa also used his knowledge of joining techniques in this project. Just before entering the exhibition room, there is a pillar that used to demonstrate the complex techniques to join the stone marbles together. He brought to attention to these parts by lacing them with exotic materials and brass plates. Another example of Scarpa's attention to detail is in the exhibition room. Taking inspiration from the stone shutters of the cathedral in Venice, he added a panel on the wall that has a cutaway to invite users to push the panel, and behind this panel is another exhibition room. Another notable work of Scarpa's is the Palazzo Chiaramonte. This building was heavily bombed in the war and certain historical parts were destroyed. So in the refurbishment of the building, Scarpa used the remaining parts to bring back the original arches into the courtyard. This building is another example of how Scarpa uses new materials to highlight existing materials below. 
Around the windows on the section of the building, Scarpa used new stucco to draw attention to the original materials around the frames, but around the archway, he brought the stucco right up to the existing arch, but diverting around parts of the frame that stick out to bring attention to the architecture in the frame. These ideas of merging old with new is something that Scarpa understood very well, and his amazing knowledge of materials allowed him to do this in the fashion that made his designs unique. Throughout Scarpa's designs, there is a wide range of different materials used, from specific types of marble to concrete. An interesting way in which he used materials is in the flaws of his designs. Some of his designs were inspired by paintings. Scarpa would use the colours from the paintings to influence the design of the flooring. But the interesting thing is how he achieved these colours through the use of different materials. For example, in one floor there could be four different materials ranging from marble to Venetian stucco and in some of his designs, he will complement the colour of the floor by having the roof the same colour. In a lot of Scarpa's work, there is an underlying depiction of water. This can be most seen in his work on the Museo Calastaficio, where he took slabs of polished concrete contained within slabs of stone. This gave the experience of a container almost overflowing into channels around. In this case, it is used to contrast against the wall, as during construction when the original floor was lifted, Scarpa liked the roughness of the underside, so decided to line the walls with it. Scarpa's great appreciation for materials and construction methods led him to highlight certain aspects of them. An example of this is when cutting steel, a hole has to be cut. So instead of removing this hole, Scarpa decided to include in the final design and to highlight, and to draw the eye to it he embedded a ring into the hole. Scarpa's choice of material is extremely unique, and only he could use the materials in such a way to draw the eye of the viewer to little details and create an experience in which the viewer could seamlessly move between rooms. Another way in which Scarpa used materials in an interesting way is with colour. A lot of the colours in Scarpa's work are natural colours of the material. For example, in some floors, red marble can be found, and the processing of these materials is how he achieved this. For example, in the Museo Calastavecchio, Rather than simply painting the floor grey, Scarpa used polished concrete to get the colour he desired, and this way of use of material is very unique. Scarpa would also implement pieces of metalwork into his designs of the exhibition of historical items, and in some cases, these would be suspended freely, resting on the wall as to not interfere with the wall as a whole. In a lot of cases, the materials used in his works would be either only polished or untouched to celebrate the natural look of the materials. Overall, Scarpa's use of material and craft, something nobody else could recreate, and this is what made all his works very unique and special.